Good evening. So glad to see you all this evening. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, I got to say, today was one of those busy days. You know, it seems like everything's been packed into the month of April, but especially this week, everything was just piled right in. And I was at my desk and I was getting things ready. I was doing taxes, which you all know that comes up Monday. And I was just, just getting frustrated. And I was like, this is just too much, then I just had to remind myself, this is the day Jesus died. Let that sink in. This is the day that Jesus died for me and for you. I thought, if he could do that for me, then I can stop and take time to focus on what he did for me. Tonight, we're going to do that. Tonight is going to be a very simple worship service. There's not going to be any preaching. There's not going to be any um, loud theatrics, anything like that. This is going to be a time for us to sit and to be reminded of what Jesus did for us. Throughout the service, we're going to have times when Scripture is going to be read, and there will be a little pause for us to reflect on it. We will watch some, some videos and take time to focus on those. We'll sing some songs about the cross. There will be songs that will be played on the screens that I encourage you to sing along with or to just sit and let it minister to, to you. But the whole purpose of this evening is for you to be reminded of the great love that Jesus Christ has for us. That Jesus Christ went to the cross for you and for me. And what a glorious thing it is. So we're going to kind of be, and and I don't want to say somber spirit, but more a, a very purposeful spirit. To focus on the cross and all that he has done for us. So I want to begin by looking at Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 5. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, as we go into this service tonight, I pray that you'd help us to just take a deep breath and forget about all the issues that are going on in our life, all the schedules and all the things taking place, and may we just focus on the cross. Lord, your word says that when you are lifted up, you will draw all men to yourself. And Father, may we boast tonight, not in ourselves, but in the cross of our Lord and Savior. May we boldly proclaim his love and his grace and his sacrifice. For there is no greater love than this. He would lay down his life for us. Lord, remind us. Remind us of the power of this day. For in Christ we pray. Amen. 
If you'd like to use your hymnal, we're looking at page 504. If not, just stand and sing from the screen. First three stanzas of the old rugged cross. <clears throat> Good
Arschlamm. The word of aloneness, Mark 14, 32 through 41. They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if it was possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he found them again sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Jesus prayed in the garden and poured out his heart for me. There has been no love shown by mortals as in dark Gethsemane. Treatment of the cruelest kind But the lips of my pure Savior Uttered not my will but
22, 54 through 62. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. The Word of Cruelty, Matthew 27, 27 to 31. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand and knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him. They took a staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. When I survey the wondrous cross
the word of suffering from John 19, 4 through 7, 13 through 16. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priest and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify, crucify. But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jews insisted, We have a law, and according to that law, he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement, which in Aramaic is Gabbatha. It was the day of pre preparation of Passover week, about the sixth hour. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. As we look at the cross, we often ask how the suffering could be done, and we know all the things that took place, but the bigger question is why? Why would God do this? Why would God allow this to happen? There's a reason for it. Clarissa has sang a song for the past five years for me that explains why Jesus died. And I hope this song would touch you the way it's always touched me. Just me and my daddy He said I finally reached that age And I could ride next to him on a horse That of course was not quite as wild We heard a crowd of people shouting And so we stopped to find out why and there was that man and my dad said he loved but today there was fear in his eyes I said daddy why are they screaming why are the faces of some of them beaming why is he dressed Daddy, please, can't you do something? He looks as though he's gonna cry. He said he was stronger than all of those guys. Daddy, please tell me why. Why does everyone want him to die? day the sky grew cloudy and daddy said I should go inside somehow he knew things would get stormy boy was he right but I could not keep from wondering if there was something he had to hide so after he left to find out I was not afraid of getting lost so I followed the crowd to a hill where I knew men had been killed and I heard a voice come from the cross it said Father why are they screaming why are the 
the faces of some of them be me why are they casting their lots for my role this crown of thorns hurts me more than it shows father please can't you do something i know that you must As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the school. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if... You are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross, and then we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him, for he said... I am the Son of God. Walking on the road to Jerusalem, the time had come to sacrifice again. <laughs> My two small sons, they walk beside me on the road. The reason that they came was to watch the land. Daddy, Daddy, what will we see there? There's so much that we don't understand. 
So I told them of Moses and Father Abraham. And then I said, dear children, watch the Lamb. For there will be so many in Jerusalem today. We must be sure the Lamb doesn't run away. I told them of Moses and Father Abraham. And then I said, dear children, watch the Lamb. But when we reached the city, I knew something must be wrong. There were no joyful worshipers, no joyful worship songs. I stood there with my children in the midst of angry men. And then I heard the crowd cry out, Crucify him! My children! Where are my children? We tried to leave the city, but we could not get away. Forced to play in this drama, a part I did not wish to play. Why upon this day were men condemned to die? Why were we standing here where soon they would pass by? I looked and said, even now they come. The first one cried for mercy. The people gave him none. The second one was violent. He was arrogant and loud. I can still hear his angry voice screaming at the crowd. Then someone said, there's Jesus. Can I scarce believe my eyes? Man, so badly beat, he barely looked alive. Blood poured from his body, from the thorns upon his brow. Running down the cross and falling to the ground. I watched him as he stumbled. I watched him as he fell. The cross came down upon his back, and the crowd began to yell. In that moment, I felt such agony. In that moment, I felt such loss. Until a Roman soldier grabbed my arm and screamed, You! Carry the cross!
father. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. So, you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it! Save yourself, us too! Don't you fear God even when you are dying? We deserve to die for what we have done, but he has done nothing. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I tell you the truth. Today, you will be with me. Paradise. I stood for what seemed like years. I lost all sense of time until I felt two tiny hands holding tight to mine. My children stood there weeping. I heard the oldest say, Father, please forgive us. The lamb ran away. Daddy, Daddy, what have we seen? That we don't understand So I took them in my arms And we turned and faced the cross And then I said Dear children Watch the Lamb By God my God, why, why have you forsaken me? Into your hands I commit my spirit. death. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. And normally this is how we would end our service. But I can't end it like this. <laughs> we call it Good Friday for a reason. And how can you look at that and say, why was that anything good to do with that? Two things. First, we know the cross had a purpose. The cross had a reason, and that reason was for us. But also, second... We know this is not the end of the story. Now we know how the story ends. Come Sunday, he's alive. And we get to praise and worship him. But let's let the sacrifice sink in. And so Sunday morning, we come in here and let's shout, let's jump, let's rejoice. 
let's scream to the top of our lungs, he is risen, he is risen indeed. Let's bow our heads. Dear heavenly and gracious Father, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, for the love he has shed for us. Lord, you demonstrate your love for us in this way, that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. Lord, we can never comprehend all that took place on the cross. There's so much more than we can begin to imagine. We can never dream of the depths of sorrow or agony that Christ experienced as he literally faced hell for us. But Lord, as we stand on this side of the cross and this side of the empty tomb, Lord, we just say thank you. We thank you that you did not abandon us, that you did not forsake us, that you did not leave us in our sin, but Lord, you saved us. Lord, we can never thank you enough. Now, Lord, prepare our hearts as we get ready for Sunday morning to hear the greatest news the world has ever heard. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Now let us wait in anticipation. For in Christ's name we pray, amen.